Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and I'm so glad to be with you again today. Oh my goodness, I'm with my very, very, one of my very, very special friends, Bill Bauer. And he's all the way from California. Bill, I'm just so thrilled that you're here in Kentucky, the great KY. I tell you, it's, it's, it's wonderful to be away from the cement of Los Angeles. And see the <clears throat> yeah. green hills of Kentucky, is that right? It really, it really is. Oh, it's just wow. great to be here, Sylvia. And always great to talk about our liberating secret that wow. changed our life. There's nothing else to talk about. Yeah. But you know right. what? Some of you all might look on my website and you will see some programs that we did some years back, back in Pasadena, mm. when I was out in his area, out in California. So right. you might want to look at some of those programs too. <laughs> if you look right on the website, it's right there uh, in the bottom part of the of that website. So you might want to look at those, but we're going to have some fresh and wonderful and liberating things to say. <laughs> and you know what? Because liberation is always fresh. It's mm -hmm. like a fresh drink of water. You know, the body yes. of Christ is crying out to really know our true freedom in Christ, our true, when Christ has set us free, he, we are free indeed. Mm. And we need to not only just think that and quote that verse, but to truly know it. So Bill, let's start out, tell them a little bit about yourself. Well, I, where, where do I start? I, I, uh, <clears throat> I guess I start back in the 70s when I was at a church, the Vineyard Christian Fellowship, and uh, pastored by a wonderful pastor, Ken Gullickson, who was then the founder of the Vineyard, just a, a wonderful guy. And at that time, um, due to certain difficult circumstances in my life, uh, they prepared me, uh, this might sound new to some of you, it prepared me for an inner Jesus, an inner Christ. And I, I had a great desire to experience Christ living in me. And I would tell different of my friends at the time, and and they would say, they'd give me a smile. They didn't quite, they couldn't quite figure out much what I was talking about. They they couldn't relate to it. And I thought, what's wrong with me? Why do I all, all of a sudden want to experience an inner Jesus? You know, I'd been caught up with an outer Christ, which is wonderful, uh, but all of a sudden I wanted to experience an inner Christ. Well, a lot of negative circumstances in my life, I think, conditioned me for that. And uh, Sylvia, I grew up in an alcoholic family and uh, with a difficult dad. And, uh, you know, uh, couldn't really be who I was. I didn't know who I was. I was invisible in that particular, uh, you know, house. And and uh, because of that, that kind of conditioned me a little more uh, really for Jesus, for salvation. And um, so, you know, I, I became saved. I, at Oregon State University, I walked into a dormitory room and there was a Christian magician and a Christian and Christian athletes uh, sharing about a personal relationship, having a personal relationship with Jesus. And at that time, um, I thought, gee, I, I know I've made mistakes. I've sinned, as they said. And so they said, well, just pray this little prayer and ask Jesus to come into your heart. And I thought, I'll, I'll do that. And so in the quiet of my heart, I repeated their prayer and asked Jesus into my heart. And, and at the time, remembered all this weight coming off me because hmm. <clears throat> I felt all of a sudden he loves me just for me. Hmm. And I would never felt that before because hmm. I was always trying to perform for people's love and acceptance and validation. And that's why I went into eventually tennis, um, was on a, did the four-year tennis scholarship thing and acting, um, which I'm still doing today, both of those two things. But I did those for validation and love from people. You know, I, I thought, you know, when, when, is, when, when the play was over, I thought to myself, <clears throat> excuse me, 
when are the next auditions? Because I, I felt that applause from the people. And it's so funny when you're acting, uh, they have to listen to you and they have to see you. And in my home, I wasn't seen, oh, yeah. nor was I listened to particularly oh, by my dad. Right. So, uh, you know, acting was the perf perfect vehicle to, for at least someone to listen to me and to see me. So, um, so that was a very difficult time. And maybe I'll go back to some more of that uh, as, we, as we talk. But um, then I jumped into the Christian life after I became born again at Oregon mm -hmm. State University. Uh, the ma mistake I made when I accepted the Lord into my life, I thought to myself, okay, you love me this much. And I thought, now I'm going to show you how much I love you. Mm. That was my first mistake, <clears throat> thinking that I could actually do things apart from Jesus. So um, I got pretty burned out trying to live the Christian life and jumped in the Christian life, <clears throat> excuse me, trying to be the unbelievable believer, mm. the unbelievable Christian. And I tried to love everybody and greet everybody and you know, serve everybody and burned out pretty quickly. Deep down within me, it didn't take me long to get wiped out. I, I somehow knew uh, pretty quickly that I didn't have it in me um, to live the Christian life and I, I couldn't make it happen. So um, I decided after uh, some time of trying to perform the Christian life and trying to just basically live life that I couldn't do it anymore. So, so I decided I was going to leave the church and just quietly leave the church, not tell anybody because I, you know, I didn't want to <coughs> discourage anybody. Oh, and, excuse uh, me. Sure. And uh, about that time, <clears throat> I was walked into a Christian bookstore in Westwood, California. And uh, the last place I wanted to be because I was going to leave the Christian scene just because I felt like I couldn't live up to all the Christian standards. And, and uh, the leaders at my church were not putting that on me. They were really, they were really grace people. Ken, Ken Gullickson was really a grace person. And, uh, but other Christians would, you know, with good intentions, would tell me, well, Bill, you just got to do this more. You got to have your quiet time more. You got to read your Bible more. You got to, all good things. But I was just worn out trying to live the Christian life. I didn't have anything left in me. And so I would not smilingly nod and, and uh, think to myself, gosh, I just can't do it anymore. And uh, about that time, Ken Gullickson, the pastor, would say things like, um, Christ is the real you. And uh, no. yeah, you're not you, but you're Christ in you. Uh, he even said one time, Christ is living in you as you. And I thought, well, that's, I've never heard anything like that before. And it kind of uh, tweaked. I always use these California terms. It got, it got, I got my interest a little bit, even though I didn't know really what exactly he was saying. So um, I walked into this Christian bookstore and I just, you know, I, I didn't even know why I was in there because I, I just couldn't be around the last thing I needed, I thought, were self-help books telling me how I need to try to live the Christian life because I felt like I couldn't live it anymore. And all of a sudden, I look at this book, and it's entitled, Not I, But Christ. It was by an author, Watchman Nee. And when I looked at it, it I had kind of a, it seemed like a little experience where I thought the not I jumped out at me when I looked at the, the book. Um, and I, so I pulled it out to the best chapter in the book, chapter 27 which is called Not I But Christ. And, and Watchman Nee said this, and I'd never heard anybody ever say anything like this. You rarely ever hear it today. I love to, I've said this so many times, I memorize it, hopefully I'll remember it here. Uh, but this is what Watchman Nee said. The great news of the gospel is not only has he delivered you, and no, I'm sorry, the great news of the gospel is uh, not only did he die for you, but he lives for you. Uh, not only is he your substitute in death, but he's your substitute in life. Wow! And he wow. he, he went That's on. Great. Yeah, isn't it? I he went on to say um, throughout the whole chapter, he kept repeating because Watchman Nee knew the value of repetition because it only comes by revelation. And so he went on to say throughout the whole book, he kept repeating, "He's delivered you from living. 
well, this was just like water to my mm-hmm. soul because I, I he's delivered me from living. I thought I had to live and had to try to make it happen. And, you know, and he was telling me, no, there was another that was living in me. Wow. And um, it was just an amazing, <laughs> amazing thing. It gave me hope, Christ in me, the hope of glory. It gave me, I was all of a sudden became a little hopeful because he was saying, it's impossible to live the Christian life. Um, it's not difficult. It's impossible. And every new Christian from the very beginning should know they can't live the Christian life. There's only one really Christian in the universe, and that's Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. And he's the only one that can live the life that you cannot live. Yeah. So, I mean, I just couldn't believe it. And I kept, I don't know how many times I, I read that chapter. Uh, the preceding chapter, 26, is almost as good on, on the deliverance from sin and how one's delivered from sin, that is a, uh, you don't hear his solution much in the body of Christ today uh, in some ways. But um, so I, I started reading all of Watchman Nee's books like um, The Life That Wins. These are all, I always say, nuclear bombs. The, uh, the Life That Wins, Christ, The Sum of All Things. Um, there's just a bunch of them, but mm-hmm. uh, that taught along these kind of lines, and uh, he would just say these things that I'd never heard before. So, so that that gave me real hope. And um, so, not too long after that, um, Ken Gullickson invited Norman Grubb, <clears throat> who wrote the uh, somewhat of a famous book in Christian circles, uh, Reese Howells, The Intercessor, and he invited. Norman to the Vineyard Christian Fellowship. Norman was in his 80s at the time, and uh, Norman's opening statement was, uh, it's never becoming something. It's It's never becoming something. It's containing someone. Self improvement is the greatest lie in the church today. Wow. Now, when he said that, no. I, yeah, yeah, I, right. I'd never heard anything like that <clears throat> before. Never heard anything like that before. And, um, but I liked it, even though I didn't quite get the whole thing. I, I, I really liked it. And um, so he went on to share the cup of coffee illustration. And he said, it's like having a, a cup of coffee, a cup on a kitchen counter, and he said, what's the function of the cup, which would be the human? What's the sole function of the human and or of this cup? And I thought to myself, well, it, it takes the coffee, you know, takes the coffee. And he said, yes, it's receptivity. It, it receives the coffee, that the main function of the cup is to receive and contain, I, I found later, express mm-hmm. <laughs> the coffee. So he said that the coffee cup isn't running around the kitchen counter on its own, is it? It's, it's without the coffee, it's empty. It, <laughs> it doesn't have a power source of its own. That's right. It doesn't have a life of its own. Right. It's just an empty cup. He said that really is the human who doesn't have any power in and of himself or herself nor a life of their own. Mm-hmm. But in that cup is a, um, a deception for many believers, a deception <clears throat> in their consciousness. They think that they do have a life of their own and a power of their own to live life, to live the Christian life, mm-hmm. to do things apart from Christ. Mm-hmm. So that the Holy Spirit has to give you revelation to show you that you've never been just this cup with a life of your own. Uh, we'll get into that later. <clears throat> but, a, but a separate self with a life of your own, mm-hmm. that that's really uh, Satan's deep lie. That particular revelation yes, changed my whole life. We'll talk more about that. But I, but anyway, so the, so what's in the cup? It's Jesus, and he the coffee, and he's the power 
and he's the holiness and he's the sanctification and the redemption and the wisdom all the fruit of the spirit yes all those things are a person right he's he's in the cup so the problem i slowly discovered as i was starting to read all of norman's books was the cup was trying to become the coffee that's right so the cup was mm -hmm. trying to become you know holy and mm -hmm. powerful and sanctified apart from christ uh, all those things that only christ can be in and through the cup and trying to be like the coffee trying to be like jesus mm -hmm. that's a that's quite a big one yeah it is you know apart from jesus that's right. You know, so um, and it was just like a major revelation and gave me such hope. And I and I was able to enter a rest um, from my own works wow. and found that I was righteous apart from works. Mm. I was righteous. I like to say that slowly. Righteous apart from works or performance, that he was my righteousness and had united himself to me. And therefore, I was righteous. Mm. I'm not righteous apart from him, but because I'm united to Mr. Righteousness, yes, that's right. I am righteous. Right. And so, what a thrill. I was I just at rest, and I, uh, I had a new lease on life. Because another, I was living by the life of another. Living by the life of another. Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. It's no longer it's not longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I live, a life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. That was a whole another thing when I realized it was His faith. Wow, I know it as well. I, know, I mean, right. I know you you know all this, Sylvia, but I just well, no. Uh, it's always wonderful and new to hear, <laughs> Bill. But you know why? Because there's really there's a deep deception in the minds of of fallen man of man that has fallen from god and so even after we're born again we, we still have an undiscovered self life don't we mm -hmm. and so god has to bring that forward to the foreground so that we can even see what's wrong with me because that's what i was always asking myself bill mm -hmm. what's wrong with me i mean you know why don't i like myself why don't i love myself why mm -hmm. Why am I always feeling like I'm wrong? Everything I do is wrong. I, if I do, if I if I speak up, I didn't say the right thing. If I didn't speak up, I didn't. I should have spoken up. So there's always a should and a. Uh, there was some something deep inside my mm. my consciousness, and we operate from consciousness, Bill. We right. do, and so spontaneously that was just always there. This idea this false idea it was really a delusion and you know i call it because you've seen my chart on the four eyes we call mm. it the you know <laughs> that deep inside there is a delusion in man and it comes over from the fall and actually it's our the grave clothes from the fall it's not the old nature but it's the lies that god has imparted that satan has imparted in our minds that causes us to think that we still have the old nature. It's not the old nature because Jesus, we know this, Bill, mm. Jesus has was crucified so that the old nature is out, the new nature is in. The Bible is clear about that. And we're going to talk about that in fullness too. Yes. You know, because we need to understand some of these terms, you know, like nature. What is nature? And why? what does the Bible say about it? And what do... You know, most people think about it, you know. And what is that undiscovered self that's deep? What is, what's this problem in man, in the Christian, that's born again of God's Spirit? Not that we don't know God's Spirit. We do know God. We do know His Spirit. We've had the baptism mm -hmm. of the Spirit. We know all this. But yet, there's something, you know, that, that, that just haunts me all the time. I'm, my mind sometimes is like a haunted house, you know, with, you know, all this that goes on inside me and all this, it's like a something inside me that makes me think I'm just not right. I'm not right. And I, and I couldn't stand it, Bill. I could not stand it. I had to know, was there more? Was there more for me as a Christian? Was there more for me to know? You know, I think there's many Christians today that are asking that question. Is there more for us? Is this all there is? Because I thought, if this all there is, then 
you know, I might as well just give up, eat, drink, and be merry and mm. die or whatever, mm. because I'm not making it. I'm not. Right. So I can't. So we have discovered what the more is, and that's really what the liberating secret is. The liberating secret is, is very simple. It's really what you just said, mm. Bill. It's the life of another substituting my, me living on my behalf. He lives as me. Now it's 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 not me that it's not really me. It's really him living, but it's as if it's me. It looks like me, it feels like me, and we can know that that is an mm. abundant life. Mm. You know, a lot of people think the abundant life is um that means outwardly everything's going to work perfect for me. I'm going to get the best job. I'm going to, you know, have all the money I need. I'm going to you see we're such surface dwellers is what I've been called, mm. saying about Christians. Mm. We live on the surface. We need to dive deep within and find out the inner Christ that you're talking mm. about that was prophesied and is, a, is, the, is the whole mystery of the gospel, which is Christ living within me because he is that abundant life. Mm. He is that supplied life. Mm. He is the one that absolutely comes and takes my place. But it's radical, Bill. It is revolutionary, and it is radical, and it is rarely understood in the body of Christ. And that's why we teach the liberating secret. That's the heartbeat behind what we have to give to the body of Christ. We believe it's rarely taught. Is yes. it taught much out in California? Uh a, yes, a, a few people are teaching it. Are beginning to. Are beginning to teach it, which is really good. That's but right. I, but it, it, it'll it cost you everything. Yes, it will. To realize you're an empty cup. Yes. I mean, to realize you're empty in and of yourself. People always say, well, where do you find that? I, I always go to Galatians 6, 3, you know, it this isn't preached much from the pulpits, but if a man thinks he's something, being nothing... He deceives himself. That's right. So in and of ourself, <laughs> we're nothing in, in the sense that we don't have a power source of our own. That's right. Or a life of our own. And um, we're a dependent. I had to find out that the cup was a dependent That's right. self. Right. It wasn't an independent self with a life of its own who could be self-sufficient with and self-reliant. Right. That that was really Satan at bottom trying to replace Christ. Yes, that's right. You know, trying yes. to... <laughs> well, I, you know, I, the real problem is God has a dysfunctional family. <laughs> we don't know how to function properly. Hmm. So all that a cup does to function is just simple receptivity. It doesn't hmm. even have a, a great big, okay, I'm willing to, I'm willing, and I'm going to... You see that big I that always rises up, the big me that can now, okay, and, and you know, we, we, we're we like, we do New Year's resolutions, like, okay, now, I know I did it last month, but now, you know what, I'm, nope, I'm going to be better this time, so we're always mm. having hope in ourselves, so we're dysfunctioning, we're not functioning properly mm. as a, just a simple receiver, a simple, I always say, if you took that illustration to a kindergarten class, they could get it. A kindergarten, that illustration is very simple for the simple-minded. However, what you said is absolutely right. It costs you everything to know you're a perfect nothing. Because the Bible also says in, 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 first, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, as having nothing, yet possessing mm -hmm. all things. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that as having nothing? As having nothing in me. As having no life in myself. Mm -hmm. Not having any power not having any sufficiency whatsoever, not anything in myself. Yet when we know that, ah, oh, then we can know the secret of real life, <laughs> which is Christ who is our life. Wow. And you know what? He is my holiness. He is my sanctification. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about all these things in fullness because this, this is, we can't say it enough. I never get tired of saying it. As much as we've known each other, we've known each other from the from sometime in the 80s is yeah. when we met. We are still talking about this because it's fresh and glorious and wonderful, and we still can't believe it that we even know it. I mean, it's just a mystery <laughs> that God would reveal it to us, and it still excites us. Yes. 
We could stay up half the night talking about it. It never gets old because the life of Christ is always refreshing and real. And it, religion gets yeah. stagnant, old. Even, I mean, I could, if the Bible is read from as if it's full of requirements, that it gets old. But if it's read filled with promises and the fact that God can't lie and we're just simple receivers, oh my God, now it's great. It's wonderful. And it, it gets to be our privilege. So um, uh, uh, I see we're just about ready to run out of time, Bill. Let yeah. me just say this. Bill has some California mm -hmm. terms, which I did not bring up earlier, <laughs> which are, he talks about tweaking. This tweaks you. What else, Bill? <laughs> oh, He'll it. say total, total. Okay, what else, Bill? Well, uh, independent self can really thrash you yeah, if you're living you. by that lie. Yes. Uh, yeah, just uh, some crazy California terms yes. that have slipped into my vocabulary. <laughs> we love it. All right, now we're going to come back next time and we're going to just continue this. Thank you so much for joining us, and may God richly mm. bless your understanding. And we just pray for you, and we love you. In Jesus' name. The more I try, the more I fall. You have been watching Liberating Secret with Sophie Pierce. We want to send a special thank you to all our supporters that make this program possible. If you have been blessed by this program and would like to contact Sylvia, you can write her at P.O. Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky. 40253. That's P.O. Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. You can also find more of Sylvia's teachings on our website. The web address is www.theliberatingsecret.org. That's www.theliberatingsecret.org. And be sure to watch again right here, Monday through Friday, at the same time for The Liberating Secret with author and teacher Sylvia Pierce. So until next time, May God richly bless you.